All right, so by the time I get to you guys, I'll be roughly 40-ish meters from this pistol plate rack. And what I'm working on today is accuracy, but I'm trying to isolate two parts of accuracy because accuracy obviously implies a lot of things. So I let me side picture, trigger control, grip, you know, all and follow through actions. Uh, but what I'm working on is uh, sight picture and trigger control. Those are the only two things I'm working on. Obviously everything else kind of implied, the grip and all that, but the focus, the emphasis here is sight picture and trigger control. I'm gonna have to optimize my sight picture and my trigger control in order to shoot those six inch plates from roughly 40 meters. Um, grip and all that is great, but again, I'm not shooting fast, you know, and I'm not doing anything crazy. So again, sight picture and trigger control is what I'm focusing on. I'm gonna have to go a little bit slower because I'm trying to optimize that sight picture. I want that red dot to be exactly where I need it to be as I'm simultaneously prepping that trigger to about 80, 90% before the bang, right? So I'm trying to get to that 80, 90% before the bang. With, with my fingers and with my eyes, I am trying to settle my sights onto that next target as best I can. Well, let's just see how we do. Hopefully we get a clean run. Uh, and if we get a couple misses in there, then, then so be it. Here we go. Okay, so other than the first one, that was a 794, by the way. Not that the time is important. Um, but other than that first one, everything else felt really good. I felt kind of slow shooting that. I felt kind of slow getting target to target. But again, my emphasis, my focus was not quick target transitions. It was really took that shot, hit that plate, settle my sights, perfect sight picture, prep my trigger to a that 80, 90% before the bang and take that next shot. And other than that first miss, it was a cleanish run, right? But there you guys go. When it comes to accuracy, when it comes to anything that we're working on in the shooting world, if it includes steps, then there has to be an isolation process for that step. There has to be a way that we can isolate that step, whether it's going from here to the gun, that's one step, right? So whether it's here to the gun, that's also one step. We can sit here and do this as much as we want to, or if it's getting that grip, getting that perfect kind of modified master grip out of the holster, then that's something we can isolate. If it's clearing that gun before we start to flare out, also something we can isolate. So if you guys think about everything we do in the shooting world, if it has steps, you can isolate it. And once you isolate that step, you are now refining that. And then you take the next step, do the same process, and you put it all together with some kind of assessment drill or culmination drill. And before you know it, your shooting skills, your proficiency, your accuracy, everything else, your movement, your mechanics is gonna skyrocket because now you're taking it step by step versus taking this whole process and just doing it and like, and you, you will, you will progress guys, but your power curve is a lot slower than everybody else's who uses isolation drills. I'm a huge advocate of isolation drills. Apply them to whatever you can apply them to and I'll see you guys next time, cheers.